All right, let's continue on on this uh, Karma Gia. Take a look here at what I'm going to use. I'm going to use some of this uh, this thing here. I'm cleaning my paint guns, but I'm going to use this DA sander. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's Harbor from Harbor Freight. Um, they have they have these things that are adjustable speed, but it's kind of cool. You can I just got it all the way up, but you can turn it down and stuff like that, but What's cool is this thing has, it's aggressive, but it's it's also something that um, you can control pretty easily. So it you can use it to sand filler and do a pretty good job, not too bad. Um, a little bit, probably better than a regular DA. Um, blocking can be done with that. You know, you're not, I'm not talking about doing, you know, long board blocking where you're trying to get everything like super perfect. Talking about something that looks like decent, you know, we're looking for 8 out of 10 paint job. We're not looking for a 10 out of 10. So 10 out of 10, you're going to do long board. So anyway, but this thing's kind of cool because it's fast sanding. When you have a car like this one here, where it had some really, really bad paint that was on it, and you had to remove all that paint and feather sand, all that stuff. So much faster to do with that sander. So, you know, I'm going to try to do some of the blocking with it to go a little bit faster and because it needs a lot of hand sanding so i gotta build some time up a lot of these corners and stuff on these gears you gotta do by hand in here it's in real tight areas and i don't know if i'll get all that stuff really perfect but anyway at least it'll look a whole lot better than not being painted and we'll have to worry about it rusting again so that was the most important thing by painting it but it's gonna look pretty nice too so we'll start getting busy on it. All right, yeah, I sanded through a few spaces, but it's actually was just barely sanded through. But anyway, I'm gonna tell you guys about a couple different prep methods that I use. Um, and there's this traditional way, typically, I know a lot of the guys do it, and they use, uh, they do their blocking with uh, 180, and then they, the old school way was finished with 320 and the paint and you'd get less sanding scratches in your finish and then I learned something called the speed prep method which is use 150 for blocking which is a whole lot faster so on this car I'm doing a 150 block and then prime so if you if you know this primer will fill 150 or 180 scratches no problem 80 scratches is going to have a little trouble with um, with the newer primers the old primers used to be a little you know the old polyester primer you can use that and it'll fill in 80 scratches no problem you can just load it up on there super heavy this one here is almost between those two so it works pretty good even for 150 this is a tamco's primer it's really good stuff and it powders really good sands really fast uh, and you can put it on really heavy without with some of the as you use that with some of the um, other urethane primers, you'll have delamination or, or it'll peel on you and stuff like that. Where this one doesn't, it's pretty good stuff. So we're using Tamco primer. We're doing the speed prep method, 150 block, 220 finish sand, and the paint. So, you know, what you get with that is, you know, if you end up polishing it anyway, Generally, if you wait long enough to let the paint, you know, shrink down into all the sand scratches. So if you wait like a month to polish it, I mean, typically there's going to be no difference in the finish. You're going to have some guys that will say, no, they always finish with 400. Some guys will always finish 600. If you're using water base, you have to do that. But I finished sand with 220. And remember back old the old days, some day, sometimes I get a cheap old Pinto or something. And we'd finish sand it with 180 and they look great and you know if you looked at it you know microscopically you could see the 180 scratches but even the 220 ones you really couldn't see them back in the old days and with the finishes today it's about the same so we're going to do the speed prep method on this car it's going to be a little faster it's got a lot of prep so anything i have with this has a lot of prep like this i'll use the speed prep method when 150 uh 220 finish sand done uh, and then if you're doing metallics, you know, you always have to sand with a finer finish sandpaper um, You can 
finish with 220, but you might end up with some issues. Um, I've done it before, finished with 220 and used base coat over it. Um, just depends on which base coat it is and then which, um, how much you put on. If you put enough of it on there, usually you can fill in those scratches with this with it. But anything, like I said, water base 600, only thing you can do with that. So anyway, 600, you can use 400, I guess, with with the uh, with the solid colors. But you know, I I don't use it. So, you know, but that's what guys that tell me that use it. It's really has issues with the same scratches showing up. They're like really horrible, like they used to with the old Glass O Max. So I used to use finer finish sandpaper with Glass O Max, the old stuff. And I had less issues with that when I was in Mercedes, BMWs, and all that stuff. So, but yeah, this works actually really good. So we did the bus that's this way, the single cab this way, um, and maybe it'll help you figure out a speedier way. Again, you lose a little bit for doing it, but really not much. It really comes out pretty good. So we'll see that in the end, the finished product.
All right, so it's about ready for starting to paint some stuff. Got this back all primed. There's a few flaws in this part. Oh, that's not that bad. There's a few in the whole car. But it's the roof I'm not so sure about. Might be a little wavy. But definitely will be out of the ripple zone. So as long as it's not ripply, you know, it should look pretty good. So we're going to guide coat this coat. This is the final prime. Just going to guide coat it. Paint it and sand it once. Do a couple touch-ups here and there. If I see something really ugly, I'll fix it. Otherwise, that's about all you get, man. Get it uh, painted up. Start shooting some jams. I said it's supposed to rain today. Doesn't look like it. But anyway... We'll shoot some jams on this thing. Check out some of the color. You guys might be shocked. All right, guys, a little bit of a color change here. Hope you don't mind. Custom ice blue. Let's look at how it changes from the Gia. It's going to look different. However you look at it, kind of a neat color. Silver some ways, blue others. If you can imagine the roundness of the car, it'll really look unique. So I haven't seen one done like this yet. I've seen some silver ones I really liked. So we were just talking about the pearl white and it was just a little too blah. I thought we'd do something really cool for a Gia. I think that looks pretty neat. All right, so I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you next one.